Hello guys and gals, today we will be looking at Sofika Temples of Mystery created in UE4 by Norse Designs. This cute little game is a puzzle platformer that sees you jumping between the clouds in what may or may not be a dream. The game has a gorgeous low poly art style with vibrant colours and a very satisfying gradient, so as you can see the models have hard edges but the shader work makes things look soft. And one of my favourite things about this game is the soundtrack, I'll let you listen to it for a second. As someone who loves piano, this soundtrack for me is incredibly calming. And when you pair that music with the art style, you get a really soothing atmosphere. For the most part, the game seems to take place in different sorts of temples, however one does stand out more than the others, and that is the Egyptian level. I think it's just because of the sheer contrast in colours, you go from lots of greens and greys to really harsh oranges and yellows. Something about that shift just feels really drastic, especially after you finish the Egyptian level, you go back to the previous styles. Now don't get me wrong, the artwork in this level is just as good as the levels before it, the soundtrack also makes a little bit of a change and that really stands out too, but it's also forgivable. The problem that I have is that it's just a singular level in this style and it sticks out like a sore thumb. I would have liked to have seen more levels of the same style so that this one didn't feel so naked. That said, the game itself is quite short, right now there are only 5 or 6 levels. I'm not sure whether or not the developer plans to add more, but at the moment you can complete the game pretty quickly. Although this game is actually quite cheap, you can pick it up for less than the price of a cup of coffee. And for a short game I can tell that quite a lot of work has gone into this, the aesthetics of the game are on point. So you get it, I like the way this game looks, I like the way this game sounds, but how about the way the game plays? Well unfortunately, the game kind of shifts direction after the first few levels. For the first couple of levels you actually have some puzzles to complete, but after that it just becomes pure platforming. The platforming itself though is quite satisfying, however there do seem to be a few problems with the controls. The player character seems to be under very low gravity, so you feel really floaty, and unfortunately you don't have very much air control. So at times when you're trying to do these really precise jumps, your character just keeps on going despite you trying your hardest to come back a little bit. There was one section in particular, I'm looking at the castle while I say this, where I was stuck for about 10 minutes. I couldn't for the life of me reach these jumps. You had to wait until the very last second to hit the jump key to make your double jump. And then sometimes the double jump was too much power and you went flying over the edge. And now when you fell down at this section, you had to start that whole bit of jumping again. It was really tedious. Although maybe those controls are like that by design. It is hinted at the start that your character could be asleep and dreaming, so maybe being floaty and weightless is supposed to represent that somehow. Either way, it does make some sections of the platforming a little bit too infuriating. And that's not because the jumps are hard, it's because at times the jumps feel a little bit impossible because of the control scheme. Although I was using the keyboard and mouse control, so perhaps it would have been a little bit easier if I'd have used controller. The game does have controller support, however it does seem to have a little bit of a drawback. No matter what I tried, every time I open the game, it also opens Steam's big screen mode to use controller. And if you close down big screen, all of your controller support turns off. Hopefully that's something that the developers will look into in the future. I can see from their Steam news page that they are updating the game regularly and sorting bugs and performance issues. With performance in mind, there are only two things in the game that I found that affected how the game ran. The first was foliage. In areas where there is a lot of foliage, there is a lot of overdraw, so your frames per second take a big hit. And the second is a very similar problem with transparency on some particles for the smoke in the portals at the end of each level. But both of those problems do pass quite quickly, so they're not game breaking. So overall, I do feel like this is a cool little indie game. The aesthetics are incredibly pleasing and the few gameplay quirks are forgivable. If you're looking for something just to play to chill out, I do suggest checking this game out. You can find a link to this game's store page in the description below, and as always, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time, bye bye.